Hello, this is BBC World News. I'm Ben Bulos. On today's Global, after 20 months of pandemic restrictions, the US opens its borders to fully vaccinated travellers. Finally, back in the air, families separated for months share their relief at finally being able to reunite. Not to be able to, you know, console each other or keep each other company or, or whatever, or hug each other when we want a good cry, you know. But we'll do it today, so I can't wait. In business, the boss of one of the world's biggest airlines warns us that despite new technology, the US reopening could lead to long lines at airports. And Pakistan lifts a ban on a hardline Islamist group a week after reaching an agreement to end a long standoff. We'll be live in Islamabad. So two hugely symbolic flights from London to New York mark the reopening of US borders to fully vaccinated travellers from overseas. Those borders have been shut for 20 months due to the pandemic. Uh, New York and other major cities hope it will help their devastated tourism sector to recover. Well, we well, with more on that, Aaron is here finding out what the reopening means for, well, for airlines in particular. Couldn't have come soon enough, right? I mean, mm. seriously, good to see you, Ben. You too. Yeah, let me explain. Hello there. As you've been hearing, the US is finally open. For the first time since March of last year, the United States has eased its travel restrictions to allow non-US citizens into the country. It certainly means anyone who's been, well, fully vaccinated and tested negative for coronavirus can enter the world's biggest economy. It's also the world's most visited country. So today, of course, certainly being welcomed by both tourists and business travellers around the world. Now, before the pandemic, the route between New York and London Heathrow Airport was the most profitable air route in the world. And our correspondent, Caroline Davies, has been at Heathrow Airport and sent us this. There have been queues out the door at Heathrow Airport today as US travel returns in earnest. This is the first time in more than 600 days that UK travellers who are fully vaccinated had been able to travel easily to the US without having to have exemptions or green cards or a US passport. The airlines have welcomed them with balloons, with flag waving and with a sense of excitement that travel to the US has now reopened. This is a major route for UK airlines long haul. It's the fourth most popular destination or it was in 2019 for UK travellers. And the fact that it's now returned is a crucial part of the puzzle for many airlines and many travel operators who've seen the rest of the world piece by piece reopen. However, it does also raise questions about what happens in the future of business travel. The world is different to the way it operated before the pandemic. People are much more used to video calls and many companies are increasingly concerned about their carbon footprint. Will business travel continue in the same way that it did before? Caroline Davies at Heathrow Airport. So, what does the reopening mean? Well, certainly for the airlines who have cut well, thousands of jobs and lost billions of dollars, but survived the pandemic with heavy government support. Just before we came on air, a couple of hours ago, in fact, I spoke to the big boss, the chief executive of one of the biggest Delta Airlines. There he is there, Ed Bastian, who was uh, at a rather busy Atlanta airport early, and I put it to him that this reopening, well, I said to him, I said, this has been a long time in the making. Yes, it has been slow. It's been 20 months since we've been able to welcome international guests back into our country. Uh, but we're thrilled we're here. We're not looking backwards, we're looking forwards. Indeed. And Ed, how easy is it to gear up for this? You know, coming from next to no international flights to all of a sudden this sky-high demand, and I believe something like 20,000 of your staff retired from Delta last year. That's a lot of talent out of the door. We've had a significant change in the company over the last 20 months, and you're right, we had about 20% of our staff, which is close to 20,000 people, retire last year. So we have a lot of new people in position. We've given a lot of new leaders and teams opportunities to step up and take on some additional responsibilities, which is always great to see. We're hiring. We've hired 8,000 people uh, into, our, into our operations over the course of the last year. And of course, in the U.S., travel has been fairly robust uh, throughout the summer. So we've had some preparation time for this but we're ready we've got our technology systems in place as the international guests come it's going to be um, it's going to be a little choppy as people go through and make sure they have all the right paperwork and they've got the vaccine card 
cards and they've got their tests in place. So I ask people to have some patience as they go through the process, but it's just great to have people back uh, into our country. Well, you, you sort of beat me to the punch. I was going to ask you, you know, how ready you're ready, how ready are the airports? I mean, because you have recently said that, you know, for international arrivals, expect some, expect some long lines possibly when you arrive. It, there may be some long lines. It's going to take some time for us because our people have to ensure that all the proper documentation. Mm -hmm. We try to do it on the exit, uh, exit European end before they get to the U.S. So we don't want anybody having a challenge with their documentation when they land. But we're ready for it. Uh, we're going to learn from it. We're trying to use as much uh, mm -hmm. technology as we can. The Fly Delta app is always the best place to load your vaccine record and get people uh, the, the required information, the documentation that they're going to need. To the better prepared customers are as they enter the airport, the smoother the journey is going to be. Indeed. And Ed, is it just families, you know, wanting to see loved ones after all this time? Or is business travel? Is, it, is that on the way back? Oh, it is. All forms of travel are on the way back. Families are the, the part of the, the, uh, the traveling public that we're most happy to see because there's been some really difficult stories mm -hmm. over time of families not being able to connect for, for long. And you can appreciate that being over in the UK. Mm -hmm. But business travel is on the way back. It's, we're probably about 50 percent of the way back from where we were relative to 2019. And every week we see improved numbers. And I was also talking to the big boss of Delta Airlines, who you just saw there, Ed Bastian, about the future of aviation. And you can see more of that full interview this weekend on Talking Business with me, Aaron Heselhurst, right here on BBC World News. The times are on your screen. The first one airing at 23.30 GMT on Saturday. Check it out. Let's talk about Tesla shares. They have taken a big hit uh, today, down more than 4%. That's in certainly an early trading in New York. And it's all because of what the boss, Elon Musk, has been up to over the weekend. The boss of the electric car company, who is certainly one of the world's richest men, uh, asked his Twitter followers if he could, uh, or should, I said they should sell 10% of his shares so that he would have to pay tax. And yes, and a yes vote meant that he could be selling now $21 billion worth of those shares. Let's jump straight over to our very own Michelle Fleury, who's following this. Michelle, good to see you as always. Um, so what is this? Is this just another Musk now. stunt? Because Bye -bye. part of all of this, Michelle, I was reading, was about the Democrats' proposal for a billionaire tax. But, but again, that's only a proposal. It's got a long way to go. Yeah, I mean, this is a strange one, even by Elon Musk's <laughs> tweeting standards. Uh, look, it, it does appear like he's trying to make a political comment. You have the Democrats who were pushing a billionaire tax, saying that much of the wealth of the richest uh, people in America is held in assets uh, that don't get taxed. And so this would be one way to kind of uh, address that problem. He's saying, well, then in that case, I might as well just sell some of my shares uh, and he put it to a vote over Twitter. Uh, the result was a resounding yes, he should sell some of his holdings. Um, and that drew a response, in fact, from the Senate Finance Chairman uh, Ron Wyden, who wrote whether or not the world's wealthiest man pays any taxes at all shouldn't depend on the results of a Twitter poll. Now, the interesting thing here, Aaron, is what investors make of this. There has been a movement in uh, Tesla's share price as a result of this tweet. It's gone down slightly. Um, and so the question is, will investors feel somehow uh, that this is legally right if he doesn't end up selling shares and they trade it on this news? OK, Michelle, I've been told to wrap it up. They're bullies. They're bullies in the control room. Uh, but listen, we'll, we'll talk soon. And we will also want to find out if the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, of course, the market watchdog, will uh, sort of be looking at this very closely. That's it. Follow me on Twitter. Tweet me. I'll tweet you back. You can get me at BBC Aaron. That's it, Betty. All yours, mate. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. We only hurry you because it means they get less time with me otherwise. <laughs>